All right, guys. So today we're gonna do a Q and A. Um, I'm at the beach. I'm lazy to edit today, so let's just do uh, a few quick questions that uh, had been posted recently on the channel and see if maybe this is the format that you guys will like and uh, we'll stick to this uh, plan. So uh, let's start uh, with Ranga H asking, Hi Erkin, I have a small question. Why are studio not possible for this tool? So this video is addressed to uh, Samsung Evo uh, 860 SSD NAND swap that I did a couple of days ago or yesterday actually and um, this device uh, was not imaging well so Ranga just uh, just so you know um, anything that comes into the shop whether the device is healthy whether the device needs uh, um, uh, some some work uh, everything that we work on has to go through disk imaging process and uh, it's not uh, to increase our workload it's just uh, be to be better safe than sorry when we create an image with data extractor, uh, every sector that we've successfully read, we don't need to come back to it again because uh, that's se that sector goes from a failed device or the device we're working on onto a different device uh, that is completely issue free. Uh, so what we end up with on the first run is a pretty much a map of all the sectors that have been read successfully. Then we can isolate all of the bad sectors and tackle them as many times as we need to. And all we need to do is just read them successfully one time for them to perma permanently become uh, successfully read. Later, if we wanted to run our studio on the image once it's completed, we can freely do so. Unfortunately, uh, those who don't use da disk imaging tools think that uh, data recovery software is a solution for any type of failed device. Usually end up uh, over exhausting devices like that because we get a lot of drives post uh, data recovery software use where they just simply are exhausted. If we were to get them before they were put through the torture of data recovery software, which just brute forces them to read uh, using uh, motherboard um, read commands, uh, they would have been probably able to provide a full copy without having to go into a serious uh, repair. Uh, that's number one question. Then um, let's go to the next one. All right, Nikita is asking, uh, how likely are you to use this newly bought e Evo 860 for other cases? Different capacity uh, can still be used. Uh, the only thing you need to look out for on, on these swaps is, first of all, like this will not work for every device. Some devices will definitely not uh, accept uh, the NAND from even an identical unit. Uh, and um, if you need to swap NANDs, uh, I mean, I guess it's something that you will just uh, learn as you go with time, you'll figure out which devices uh, take this comfortably, which ones that don't take it at all. Uh, but uh, uh, it's, as you could probably see in the video, uh, this SSD had positioning for two NAND chips. And in some cases, like a 500 gig unit could have two chips instead of uh, one or even a 250, depending on what size chips they use. And uh, usually with different amount of chips, you're gonna have some extra components present uh, to regulate that physically. They're not all gonna be regulated through like, uh, like the controller. Um, sometimes there will be uh, something on surface mount that will be different and that's what you gotta pay attention to. Just make sure you uh, transfer everything that belongs to the ones uh, with the bigger component count than uh, the ones that have the least component count. Next one is, <laughs> it's a good question, it's a quick question. Uh, how the hell do you learn something like this? Uh, practice, man, I mean, nothing but practice. Next question, please, you, please can you make uh, how to do software for the USB flash drive and memory card, thanks. There is no simple answer to that. Flash memory recovery is probably the most complex thing uh, that is uh, currently exists in the uh, uh, data recovery industry uh, if you're recovering the data directly from the NAND um, so uh, making a video that explains how that works um, I have plenty of content and every video pretty much that I post about uh, NAND flash recovery does speak a little bit of different scenarios and different things not all flash drives are built the same so there is no simple solution that will apply to all of them Sorry man, you have to really dive deep into the manuals of the developers and read information 
once you have their tools so that's how you're gonna learn otherwise you just uh, uh, it's gonna go into one ear and out of the other how long does it take to get permanently deleted after the deleted data is overwritten well you look at the speed of uh, your device it's usually stated on the label of the card um, or the label of the packaging and that's the speed that, it, that you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna record this with uh, to override it so I guess if your question is how long does it take to override all of the data so it's no longer recoverable well it's gonna take as, exactly as long as the buffer uh, can allow it to be if your speed is 95 megabytes per second you're gonna take that number and you're gonna apply it to the capacity of your device you're gonna divide it by that speed and you're gonna get your seconds count uh, next uh, hi Erkin cool job as always the tool that you use for the SD card seems to shorten the work I have requests though I really would like to learn a sector construction like you did on the page designer would you do another example without presuming us knowing certain parameters like you said the sun disk okay well um, that I see what that question is uh, this uh, question actually it's pretty valid uh, but there are different um, controllers that use uh, kind of a base for their framework um, I, this could be a SanDisk, this could be a Silicon Motion, this could be a Fison and uh, usually these uh, controller developers they use a specific way of how they of how they arrange uh, their data service area uh, markers and stuff like that so once you work with few of them you'll just kind of you know build that knowledge and uh, it will be easier than next time around um, is there an easier way to figure it out yes there is an easier way to figure it out it's by looking at the uh, um, at the bit view and you can manually uh, measure these uh, distances for how long a service area is going to be how long is the data area is going to be uh, but you got to know at least some parameters about how uh, the data is arranged within the pages at least on the controller level not on the controller specific part number level but just generally a vendor of the controller level right so I'll, I'll keep that in mind man I'll, I'll come back to that in the next video I do uh, start like from fresh I'll try to cover a bit more ground basis for you I know you follow me along and watch a lot of my videos and um, you're definitely not gonna miss this I'm gonna make a video on that this is from one of the Russian followers ну тебя я пробила на флешке а винты когда будут винты SSD на 3000 скоро скоро они будут обязательно будут куда они денутся даже они денутся но винты были записаны я не знаю все это время записывал винты надо просто время найти смонтировать будут скоро interesting videos uh, but uh, will you also show HDDs I like the mechanics absolutely same question actually um, you posted the exact same question as the guy in Russian did yes definitely uh, hard drives are coming we have a lot of them uh, did you try changing the NAND voltage or freezing the NANDs maybe the controller would load its firmware eventually um, you know what I don't think it would because uh, in my in my experience when everything is mounted to the original device freezing it or heating it up is not gonna do any different because uh, the uh, um, because I believe that read retry parameters are set up to be uh, on the at least on the on the on the physical pre-mounted way how the manufacturer has it they're gonna they're gonna apply the best uh, combination of read retry voltage and uh, and temperature settings to you know operational temperature uh, read retry mode and uh, voltage that it needs to run on so that it's the most stable uh, I didn't I didn't a short answer is no I did not try to freeze it I did not try to heat it up but never I can't recall a single instance where if I did try this it would help it does help and work 
on NAND uh, readers because on NAND readers you don't know what the optimal read retry was, you don't know what the best voltage was, uh, you're kind of pre-guessing those parameters, right? So you have a uh, ability to select them and choose them as you wish. They don't necessarily, um, they don't necessarily, uh, you know, come out as factory right at the start. So you don't know whether they, they need to be uh, specifically set up to be this way or the other way. So you're testing a bunch of things. And that's when uh, playing with temperature can come, uh, uh, can be very beneficial, especially if you don't have read, retry uh, option available. Next question is also a very good question. How do you charge for a failed recovery? This is uh, on a flash drive that I was posting where the results couldn't be obtained within the video and guys this is what I also wanted to mention um, now when a case is uh, being produced and let's say we reach a conclusion that it's not possible uh, in the last specific video and it, that was titled uh, not all flash drives can be repaired if you go into the uh, playlist you may find it there it's just from a few days ago that flash drive wasn't repaired on basis of what we were trying to apply to the device to make it happen it doesn't mean that if we didn't really need to get that data, uh, we would see the same failed result. Um, if we really needed to get that data out, and if the budget wasn't the question, uh, we would figure out the time frame that it's going to take. We're going to price uh, the case based on that time frame, and if the customer approves, we go ahead and put our time in it as a risk. Now, for me to get into a risky case, I need to know what I'm, in, what I'm putting in time-wise when odds are not in my favor and those are going to be exceptional cases right so cases that take two or three months on error correction are not going to be priced the same as those that take two to three hours in error correction you know what i mean so obviously there is a big difference there uh, but as for failed device recovery what do we charge we don't charge anything for failed device recovery unless it's been uh, discussed with the client and the client is okay with taking the chances on what we're going to put in like right like what i'm saying some cases may take uh, literally like months in error correction and if I'm spending that much time and I don't get the recovery I'm still gonna charge some money just for the time invested into the R&D work that needs to be put in because we don't work with crystal balls we work with uh, flash tools and hard drive tools and uh, they don't tell us the future they tell us uh, only what <laughs> a present situation can bring so uh, if we don't know how the future is gonna turn out I can't really you know, uh, charge based on that. So in cases where the recovery fails, if it's not something that I was predicting being a very complex thing, we don't charge anything. No data, no fee. But if the case is challenging and we know up front, up front that we need to put a lot of time, a lot of effort into uh, a device, then yes, there will be some fee uh, that we will consider to be fair to cover our cost of our time to give it a decent enough attempt now this is why a lot of cases guys that we see coming into the shop are leaving other shops as unrecoverable it's because maybe they don't want to charge anything up front to put a good enough effort into the recovery process and give it its best knowing that the odds are so small of succeeding at it right and they say, no, we can't do it, just uh, give it back to the client because it's easier for them to just hop on to the next easy case and get a quick one. It's not the approach that pros would take, I, I think. You know, if you really uh, are a guru of this stuff, you should be able to handle all sorts of things. Old Fart is asking, uh, have you done a lab tour? Every video lately seems to have a different uh, wall behind you. I agree man, the, today is a new wall behind me, actually no wall but the tent, I'm on the beach and uh, doing this Q&A with you guys. Uh, no, I don't think I've done uh, a lab tour, but uh, when I get back to Ottawa I probably will. The uh, thing is, uh, is, recently I spent more time working flash devices just because um, um, I'm not the only one that works uh, for HDD and we have uh, other staff that can handle different projects as well so uh, all of my um, personal uh, equipment for uh, recording is set up for flash right now so that's why you see most of the stuff um, that's showing up on the channel 
uh, being addressed towards that topic. Uh, however, everything uh, that is interesting and uh, good enough to show on camera for hard drives related top, uh, subjects is being filmed and uh, I have literally like probably like close to 200 gigabytes of footage uh, from uh, last almost like a year and a half of just uh, straight hard drive work and uh, we're gonna eventually get to the part where it's gonna be edited and uh, uh, covered. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of interesting stuff going on there. So uh, don't don't think that you know I'm only working on flash drives right now. We cover everything, uh, flash drives, hard drives, anything that breaks, we fix it and recover data from it. All right, guys. Well, this has been uh, fun. Uh, I'm gonna read some more questions later tonight. I try to highlight some. And uh, if you have some questions that you wanna post in the comment section here below. Uh, absolutely do so and uh, I'll definitely go over them in the next video. Thank you very much. Uh, stay uh, tuned. 30 and 30 challenge uh, continues and I'll see you all in the next episode.